Hey there everyone and welcome to another Fundamentals of Science video with the Seattle Children's Museum. My name is Daniel, I'm an educator at the museum, and today we're going to be talking about renewable wind energy and making some pinwheels that we can use to see the wind's force outside. For today's activity, you're going to need a pair of scissors, a hole punch, a brad, a pencil, a straw, mine fell on the floor, and a piece of paper cut into a square. You can take a regular piece of construction paper, an eight and a half by, or eight and a half by 11 paper, make a right triangle with it and cut off the top and that'll get you a square piece of paper. Or if you have some origami paper or other square paper at home, that will work just fine. So we're gonna start with our square piece of paper. And what we're gonna do is we're going to take our straw and find the halfway point, or at least about the halfway point of our straw, and we're going to place the halfway point of our straw on one of the corners of our piece of paper, just like this. When we find that, we're going to take our pencil and just draw a straight line from the middle of our straw to the halfway point of our straw. So we have a line from the middle of our straw to the halfway point of our straw, and we're going to do that on all of our corners. So we find the middle point of our straw, put it on the corner of our square, and draw a straight line from every corner on our piece of paper. Middle point of our straw, draw a straight line, middle point of our straw, draw a straight line. So now we have a piece of paper that looks like it has an X drawn in it where the X doesn't cross in the middle. It's a little hard to see on my piece of paper, but now what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut along that line we just drew on all four corners of our piece of paper. Till we have something that looks kind of like this, where we can see we have our flaps on all the different parts of our paper. Then what we're going to do is grab our hole punch, and we're going to punch one corner. I'm going to pick the left-hand corner, or the corner on this side of the paper. It'll be right for you at home, or at least it should be. So I'm going to punch on one corner like that. So see how I punched on one corner? And then we're going to turn our paper and we're going to punch on that same corner on the next part. We're going to punch on the one closest to us on the next part and then the one closest to us on the last part. So what you should have is next a paper that looks kind of like this. It'll be a little hard to see the holes here here, here, and here, but every corner should have one hole on it, and the holes should always be on the same side of the corner. So see how my hole is on this side of this corner? And if I turn it, my hole is on that same side, on the next corner, and so on, till you have a piece that looks kind of like this. Now what we're going to do is grab our pencil again, and we are going to fold inwards and find the middle of our paper. So we're going to take our hole right here, we can see, and we're going to put it in the middle of our piece of paper to about where we think the center will be, and we're just going to make a little dot with our pencil. So I made a dot in the middle of my paper, a little hard to see there, 
but I made a dot in the middle. And what I'm gonna do where that dot is, I'm gonna take my brad with my grown-up's help, if I have a grown-up around, and we're gonna poke it through our paper and twist it to make a hole in the middle of our piece of paper. Then what we're going to do, you can see my brad. So now that I can, we want to make sure it can spin on our brad. So we already have the starting of our pinwheel. Now all we need to do is take our corners and fold them in on top of each other so that all the holes line up. So I'm taking every corner and folding them so that they all line up till I have something that looks a lot like a pinwheel. And I'm going to take my brad and put it through all those holes making my pinwheel. So let's do them one at a time because it'll be a little easier. I'm going to take my brad and put it through all those holes. And if I hold it in the back, I have my pinwheel. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to open up the little legs on my brad just so that my pinwheel won't fall apart. And I'm going to grab my straw. Now what I'm going to do with my straw is I'm going to grab my hole punch again. I'm going to smush the end of my straw with my fingers like this. And I'm going to punch a hole so that it goes through both sides of my smushed straw and there should be two holes right next to each other in your straw. Then what we're going to do is if we're going to squeeze the little legs of our pinwheel back together and we're going to put them both through both holes in our straw, leaving a little bit of room on the other side, and then we're going to spread them flat on the back so that they look kind of like this and have a straight line. And then we need to make sure that our pinwheel will spin. If it doesn't spin very well, like mine is, you might have to loosen your brads up a little bit, which is okay. So I'm going to let mine go in a little and then out again hopefully have a pinwheel that spins. And so you can practice with your finger and make sure your pinwheel spins or you can practice by blowing air. So I now have a pinwheel. Pinwheels are a small example of something that we like to call windmills and I'm sure you've seen a windmill as you've been driving around or maybe in a picture. A long time ago we used to use windmills to catch the wind and spin what are called the blades. So these things are called the blades of a windmill. Spin the blades. The blades would then spin a long stick that would go down inside the windmill and turn something called a grindstone and we would use that to turn wheat and corn into cornmeal and flour. Nowadays, we use wind as a way to get energy. So we have huge, huge windmills. They probably have big white fan blades. They're pretty easy to see in big open fields. Here in Washington, we have a lot of wind energy. And what we do is we have the wind spin our windmills incredibly fast. That spins something called a generator inside of it, which takes spinning and uses magnets and wire to make electricity. And then we can use that electricity to power all kinds of stuff, like the device you're watching this on, or the lights in your house or the street lights outside. Wind is a super clean form of energy because wind is made by heat. And luckily for us here on Earth, we have something heating the air all the time. It's up in the sky. You might have seen it before. It's called the sun. The sun light heats the air around us. And as the air gets hot, it rises up in the atmosphere till it gets colder and colder. 
because the heat radiates from the ground. So the, the sunlight comes, hits the ground, heats the air close to the ground, the air rises up, and then when it gets up high, the air falls back down in huge currents of wind. And we can catch that wind as it's on its way back down, let it spin our turbines, and provide us with energy. And that cycle will just keep repeating itself over and over again. So, you can take your pinwheel outside and see if you can find a nice breeze. It's summer right now while I'm filming this, or about to be summer, so it's plenty hot outside, and I can see if I can find a nice breeze to cool myself off and to make my pinwheel spin. So, I can know that my pinwheel is turning wind into movement, and that if I had one, I could have a little tiny generator, and it would cause a little bit of electricity. So know that wherever there is wind, there is a potential for energy that is all around us all the time. Thanks for joining me for another program with the Seattle Children's Museum and our online content. I hope to see you again sometime.